I was first handed the materials, I kind of thought, wow, I don't know about every single religion here. How am I going to teach about something I know nothing about? But then I thought, then I looked at it more closely, and it's been well developed. It works perfectly with the QEP, so I'm just going to try it. And I came to realize through teaching the course over the year that it's simply sharing, reading stories, and sharing, um, sharing about our cultures. And so we start to build on all those commonalities and all the things that that really link us together. And we say, you know, it's different in this way, but it's the same in that way. We're talking about identity and who we are, where we come from. Where were you born? I was born in Korea. My dad is born in Canada. And my mom is born in St. Vincent. My next question is, have you ever been teased? Has anyone ever made fun of your name? Who's had that experience before? Don't be shy to raise your hand. There used to be people who used to tease me and I, with my last name, and I didn't like it. I think it is very difficult to get the students where we want them to be, basically to show them how to have an effective dialogue. So we have to basically go through certain criteria that we expect, what makes a good dialogue, and once we have that established, it's easier for them to start having a whole class discussion. Um, even though you don't agree with someone, it can also be a good dialogue because you can work things out and ask them if you can find something that both of you can agree on. Behind me on the wall you see um, attitudes and um, attributes and we're constantly relating everything back to that. So it might be anything from respect to curiosity to tolerance. When you make fun of other people's name, it could hurt other people's feelings. So which of the attributes of Lunar Profile, which attitude would you like people to be using to help keep that from happening? Cooperate. Cooperation. Cooperation. Oh, how come? Because maybe if, if you're being nice with the other person, they will be nice with you and you will make friends. Bringing everyday events into the classroom is what makes it real for them, and that's how you know you have their attention. So, Josiah, earlier when you thought that Julian was actually laughing at DeAndre, do you understand now that that wasn't really fair to jump to that conclusion? Effective teachers are the best uh, ERC teachers because teachers are able to respond to students and take their student concerns and use them in, in the discussion of the course. Um, teachers with professional development will learn some of the information, however, uh, teachers will have to look for and seek the materials related to their class environment. Do you remember I told you that we would have a chance to actually type your names into the computer and see what they tell us about where your name comes from? I use a smart word as often as I can every day in the classroom, one way or another integrated into my teaching. I've been using it as an excellent tool that engages the kids. Of course, it's a screen that they can go and touch, that they can interact with. So it's something, again, that's real to them in their reality that they relate to. So you have their attention. When I saw Audrey again, she was training grasshoppers. Her antenna had to be fake, but the grasshoppers didn't. In this school, we're very lucky that our librarian uh, has, a selected, has selected a bin in the library for us. In there, she puts any uh, books that are related to the ethics and religious culture. The resources help uh, tremendously because it's a visual for the children. They love to sit around. We have an invisible carpet. We have carpet time when we sit and we have group discussion and they like to look at the pictures and they like to give their, uh, their opinions. At Hillcrest, we've had three types of professional development. Out of school training offered by our school board, in school support, by support personnel, consultants, as well as providing the appropriate materials. So in preparation for today, Chloe wanted to do something extra special. So we work as a cycle, as the QEP mentioned it. First of all, it gives us ideas. You have a second brain, so you have other opinion, you have other point of view, so you might rethink the way you wanted to approach something, the way you wanted to see something. Even when you're correcting, you might have a doubt, should do you think this is good enough? Do you think they should add something? So it's always like you always have a feedback and uh, it's less time consuming, of course. What is the difference between culture and religion? Thomas, that's a great question. Religion is your chosen faith, your belief in God. And 
and culture is the way people live their life, their traditions and their customs. It was a great question. Um, I actually told the children what I thought immediately, the answer, and then I told them I wanted to research it and come back to them with a better answer. And I also told them that they can discuss it with their families at home. It's a good question to bring up around the dinner table. And uh, the following week, we just addressed the question again. When we start with the student himself, and he goes home and say, okay, I, I would like to answer those questions. How do we do it in our family? How your parents did, grandparents? They come with the stories and they love so much to share. So it really doesn't matter if it's we are different religions or even one that has different customs. So there's a big difference between sharing your personal opinions and your personal experiences. I might share, for instance, um, with the students, I went to Japan. So of course they're going to be excited to see those pictures. They're going to be excited to have a photo of the Buddha. We've just read a story about the Buddha. Let's integrate that in. We don't delve into who believes what exactly. It's more just what do you know about this already? Oh, you practice that at home? Oh, but it's very, we leave it very open. I did my presentation on Chinese New Year because I'm Chinese. And what do you do to celebrate Hanukkah? How do you celebrate it? I like candles. You like candles, excellent. I drew a picture of a celebration called Kwanzaa. Basically, during the celebration of Kwanzaa, families, African-American families, gather around the table. Uh, they have a meal together. They light candles. And each one, each person, each member of the family has to name an important African-American. And of course, the most popular one today, Barack Obama, was mentioned in the classroom. We had a great discussion about Barack Obama. Bringing in current events into ERC keeps the children up to date and it also, I feel, gives them a sense of the belonging. Some of the children that, you know, may have things happening across in the Middle East that can relate to it and just being aware of what is happening in the world and, and how to, um, you know, show them that sometimes the news says one perspective but other things might be happening and we all have different views on the same topic or idea. Too frequently what we have are, are students um, talking from ignorance, from a lack of knowledge. So at some point this course has to infuse knowledge. But once they have knowledge, they'll be able to hook into it and dialogue with, uh, with respect to uh, the materials they're dealing with and share practices and ideas. So in preparation for our guest speaker, uh, we need to come up with some fantastic questions to ask her. We invited a native speaker from Ganawagi to talk about the traditions um, of their culture. And when you invite a guest speaker, it's always a good idea to ask questions. I wanted to make sure that they were relevant, important, interesting questions. Okay, what is a powwow? The powwow is when everyone comes together in a community and they do different dances and traditional dances. Inviting people from the community is really important because especially with this new class, there's no way we're going to be expert of all the religion, especially the first year. It actually takes the pressure off to some extent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you're not responsible for everything and transmitting it's, everything. For us, it's just resource, golden resource. We have to take into consideration that the higher grades can really find most of the information on the Internet. If you give them some website, they will find a lot more. For the lower cycles, uh, I always suggest is to actually either have the right books or print from, I, I printed here for grade three and two, some material. Each uh, religion got a, a folder with, uh, with the material and they got the pages to write it in, very simple. And they could still look on the internet to find the, the, the right photo, and they liked it very much. Um, and then at the end, they will produce work like that, where they are going to either write it on the computer or write it by hand and present very nice work, because kids like to present nice work. Today we're going to be looking at a question, an ethical question, 
and we're going to be having a debate. You've already done the research. You've already gone on the internet, looked up at articles. You already have all that information. So you're going to get into the two groups and you're going to debate whether animals should be in zoos or whether they shouldn't be in zoos. Through debating, the children are learning how to, first of all, realize that they do have an opinion on a topic and then do the research and then they either keep the same opinion or they end up changing their opinion, not realizing that they didn't have enough information the first time. So respect each other's opinion and have fun. I think there should be zoos because in the wild there are over 50 animals that die every single day. Children so like debating because it empowers people. them. I think that animals should be in zoos. In ERC, I focused on developing point of views. I also focused on creating dialogue and uh, respecting each other's opinions. Okay, so now that we have done the debate and I've randomly put you in two groups, pro and against zoos, you are now going to get the opportunity to write your own personal point of view in which you really believe whether animals should be in zoos or shouldn't be in zoos. At the end of each lesson, we evaluate what we have done. It's important to summarize what is it that we learn. And then we look at our uh, competencies and see not only the, what we learn, but also the, uh, what we are able to do today. That we learn how to do, we, we learn maybe how to listen more, maybe we learn about a new concept. But what is it that we learn? We cannot just send the students without repeating. Many of the concept, concepts are completely new and it's not fair. It's the end. At recess, I wanted to play with Gabriella and Alicia at Skipper Mall, but they didn't let me. Because uh, we were playing a game just for two people and then... They love role-playing, the cycle one. The younger kids love role-playing. Did you feel left out? And you girls, can, were you able to put... Remember what we said about putting ourselves in someone else's shoes? I use uh, situations that actually occur out in the schoolyard or if the children come to me with a certain problem, I ask them to reflect upon the situation and how uh, for them to reflect and correct is what I say. If they're not proud of their actions or what could they have done better, how could they have handled a certain situation better, what could they do differently next time. Uh, yesterday we went on a field trip to Ganawage and well in the bus um, we had a tour guide and he told us all about the native traditions, the clans. Last week I was asked a, a question I didn't know the answer to. I was asked um, about clans. And what is a clan exactly? And I really wasn't sure how to answer that question. So Annabelle and I uh, did our research and we actually arranged a field trip to Ganawagi. Uh, we went in person and I asked a chief in person to explain the clan system to myself and my students and it was great. It also shows the students that it's okay not to know everything. Ms. Nadia, but didn't God create the earth? In different religions, they believe that God created the earth and the world. What is the Big Bang? The Big Bang is what some scientists believe in, and they believe that everything started with a big explosion and that everything around us is made up of these, this, these particles from the Big Bang. And that's different from religions. Many different religions believe in different creation stories. It's very important that we respect everybody's beliefs and religions, and hopefully that will make a better world in the future, a peaceful world. Diwali, Diwali. Well, meeting with my native students on our lunch hours, um, they were definitely very proud to be a part of that. Um, we, we made a list of all the different artifacts that they wanted to bring in from their culture. So they're very proud to, oh, yeah. to involve their family and their culture, definitely. Anytime that they can show something to everyone, it's, yeah. they're proud of it. There are a lot of resources on the Learn Quebec site. Whenever I need anything, I just key in the topic and up comes all a variety of uh, little movie clips or suggestion, book suggestions. Either I find them in my library or I can go to uh, online bookstores and I order them. The resources are there. You may feel that they're not, but if you ask 
um, about them. You will find some and they're fantastic. And we don't have to be scared about, about starting. The children are incredibly enthusiastic about it and just let them lead. You just start and they will lead and allow them to lead and you'll see the lesson teaches itself.